Hey guys, Professor Yerby here again. In this video, I want to talk about some of the differences between Hyper-V that's included with your server 2012, 2008, whatever the version may be, and the standalone free version of Hyper-V. Now, Hyper-V has gone through some dramatic in, uh, improvements since it was first released. Uh, when it was first released, many people took a look at it, did not meet what they were looking for, and have since abandoned it. Uh, Hyper-V is slowly starting to uh, gain some market share from VMware, Zen, and some of the other large players uh, because they have dramatically improved the product. Uh, but what I want to do in this video is take a look and kind of compare uh, the, the Hyper-V that comes with the server versus the Hyper-V standalone download. Uh, so I'm just going to look at three different options here. Look at cost. So if we look at the standalone version, the cost of it is very attractive, right? Free. You can go out there, you can download it. Uh, I think you may have to give them your email address, but there's no cost. Uh, versus if you use cost in the server where it's built in, that's going to be whatever the cost of the addition of Windows Server that you purchase. So we know that there's all the different additions, uh, and different additions have different capabilities with that. Uh, and then a thing to caveat with cost is depending on which edition and the method that you license your servers, uh, cost could still be a uh, benefit uh, going through the built-in version and then you could use the free version to manage those because you would have already purchased the licenses. Uh, because if you're going with the free version and you're using Windows Server still as the servers that you're virtualizing, you still have to have licenses for each of those instances of that virtual server. So, uh, but looking at it at just on the surface, uh, it seems like the standalone version uh, wins on cost. But let's keep going. Uh, manageability. So here is where you get what you pay for in this instance. Uh, so the free version comes with a very basic interface. Uh, it looks very command prompt like. It's choose option one to do this task, choose option two to do this task, and it's, it's pretty limited. While the paid version, the one that's included with your Windows Server 2008, 2012, uh, comes with several options. So you have the Hyper-V Manager Console, which looks uh, very polished. It's a nice graphical user interface, and it's easy to click and see the uptime of your different servers that are up there. Uh, to do tasks using your mouse instead of having to type everything or select option one. Uh, you also have System Center Virtual Machine Manager. Uh, but System Center is uh, very involved, very complicated, and it's not included with your already paid for license of Windows Server. So it's Microsoft's preferred way to manage uh, multiple virtual machines in an enterprise environment. But again, it's uh, fairly complicated to set up, and it's an additional expense. You can also use PowerShell. Uh, there's a steep learning curve with learning all the different commandlets in PowerShell. But once you learn those, it can be very powerful, can be very quick, uh, and you can really manage a large set of machines uh, with a few commands. Uh, and then the, the last option that you could do with either version is you can remotely connect to a machine that is running Hyper-V. So looking at the part of manageability, it looks like the paid version wins that one easily. So right now we're kind of tied. Cost is the free version and manageability is the paid version. If I had to make a choice at this point, I would probably go with the paid version. Uh, but it's always going to depend on your situation, your needs, so there is no single right answer at this point. Uh, then the last thing we want to look at is fault tolerance. So in the paid version, fault tolerance uh, would be done very similar to how you would do fault tolerance for any other sort of organizational servers. Uh, you would have to replicate that server, create a new uh, service set, make sure everything's there. Uh, since it's a paid version, it's included in the server, you need another paid server to be included. So it's a, a bit of work, a bit of uh, resources needed to set that up. 
versus the free version, which is a very lightweight, small client. It's free, so you can set up multiple instances of that lightweight, free uh, Hyper-V uh, download and manage multiple servers. So I think the free version wins that one too. So looking at the two different ones, the standalone free version versus the built-in Windows server, the standalone in the three criteria that we looked at today, it won two of those categories, but the paid version won probably the most important uh, category, uh, manageability. So it's, uh, it's always going to be a toss-up, but I wanted to kind of put this out there and kind of help clarify the differences between what Hyper-V is, where it's ran, and the different options versus standalone and built-in. So thanks, have a great day.